Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Peter King is retiring, Tony. Are you thinking about hanging it up? I'm Tony Kornheiser. Every day, just before we do the Sports Center segment. Yeah, I'm sure they love hearing that. That's when it comes to me. They love that. You ought to quit right yeah. now. Done. That's something I, if I walk out and I don't have to do that, that's a win, don't you think? That's a big win. You're leaving wow. so much on the table, though. So much. Yeah. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Wake Forest fans storm the court. Steve Kerr agrees to an extension. And Sunday's NASCAR race ends in a photo finish. But we begin today with Cody Bellinger signing a three-year, $80 million contract to stay with the Chicago Cubs yeah. after his great comeback season. Yeah. When he batted 307 with 26 homers, 97 RBI, and 20 stolen bases. Bellinger and his agent, Scott Boris, were looking for something longer and far more lucrative than this. So, Wilbon, what does this deal do for Bellinger, the Cubs, and the remaining Boris free agents? Well, for two years, at least, if he's there for the second year, it gives him like $30 million in salary. So let's not, we don't need to, you know, set up a GoFundMe for Cody Bellinger just because he didn't get $200 million, all right? So it's a shorter-term deal. It's a great deal for the Cubs, Tony, because Bellinger, while he was great for us last season, he had injuries before that, and he was not great. He had a couple of seasons after right. that MVP year where you go, wow, is Bellinger on the decline? Is it just injuries? Healthy last year. He was terrific. Kept the Cubs in contention until the final couple of weeks. And the Cubs are hoping that with Bellinger in that lineup again and a year of experience and acquired savvy for that team and improvements along the roster, that they can actually win the division. So you need Cody Bellinger. You need that bat, that threat in the lineup. I don't know what it means for Boris's clients overall because they don't have the same circumstances as Bellinger. Each one has different circumstances, some coming off a yeah. better stretch of time than Cody Bellinger. So I, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and try to be Tim Kirkjian and tell you I know what's going to happen in the market with the Boris clients, but this is great news in Chicago. Yeah, it's a one-year deal, Mike. Yeah. Bellinger can opt out in either of the first two years of that contract. Nothing binds him to the Cubs at, at all. Um, I think it's a great deal. I mean, he can go back into free agency at the end of, you know, October. He can, right. he can do That's that. Right. I think it's a great deal for the Cubs because at the very least, they're getting a guy at 28 years old in his prime for not a lot of money, even if it's only one year. I think it's less good for Bellinger. It sort of feels to me like he caved a little bit. He and Scott Boris were looking reportedly for between 150 and $200 million and something six years and up. Have I ever mentioned to you that Scott Boris could be the devil? Here's the thing about Bellinger. If he has a great year, Mike, he can go back into free agency and at 29 still be in his prime and probably get a long-term deal. I think that people didn't want to give it to him this year because as you're saying, you don't know if you can trust this year to be the start right. of a long-term thing. It might have been a one-off after what had happened before. But it seems to me it just leaves Bellinger sort of in a waiting room, like in a doctor's office. I mean, I again, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's a pretty good doctor's office yeah. if you're making $30 million this year. It's okay. You can well, sit and wait for the okay. doctor at $30 million fine. and pile up numbers at but Wrigley Field. a guy Field. like that, with those numbers... He could have gotten more. In terms of Boris's other clients, maybe they'll opt to do the same thing and get out after one year, although pitchers, pitchers rarely do that. So I don't think they're going to do that. Would but I mean, long -term. for Bellinger, I, th I thought he'd get a better, I thought he'd get a better deal. I do. I'm glad he got the deal he got. Let's go, Cubs. Let's move to the court storming that led to Kyle Filipowski's injury. Wake Forest fans stormed the court to celebrate the Demon Deacons. Narrow win over Duke. At least one made contact with the Duke star's right leg, and he was helped off the court eventually by a teammate and a team manager. Duke head coach John Shire, of course, was furious, asking, quote, when are we going to ban court storming? Close quote. Tony, is it time for this unbelievably stupid tradition to go? Oh, it's way past time. It's wild behavior. It's dangerous behavior. I mean, you really, you really can't have it. I was, I was thinking about this, Mike. When we were sports writers and we covered games and we sat pretty low down, you know, when, when we were near the court,
you didn't have court storming because there was always security around, Mike. They, I mean, we were looking oh, at I'll the backs of secure guards. I'll tell you about an exception. Uh, well, Mike. okay, but in, in, my, in my remembrance, that's what it was. So I would say to schools, if you think you have any chance to win at all and you always have a chance, you know, go get some security. This is the second time in a couple of weeks we've seen a big star get smashed, Caitlin Clark. literally smashed. Caitlin Clark and, and Kyle Filipowski. Like, I don't know that I agree with Filipowski's contention that he was targeted. I'm not saying yeah. that. But it is chaotic behavior, and you have to threaten to take away the win or threaten to take away home games. Mike, just as an aside, I don't know how badly he's hurt. But if he lost an NBA career... He could sue Wake Forest for hundreds of millions yeah. of dollars, and they would be liable because this would be lack of institutional control, as the NCAA And likes Tony, to there have to be institutional controls. It doesn't start with the school. It can't start with the school. The school has to enforce it because you're at the school's gym. But, Tony, there's no other opinion on this. And I thank God, you know, Jay Billis has been adamant about this as this network's in large voice when it comes to college basketball. And I, I applaud Jay. I, I really meant to call him and say thank you. This has to stop. There's no other opinion. Any other opinion is stupid and lazy and ignores the safety of the athletes and the fans. I've heard people say, oh, they should just delay it 30 seconds and let the fans. So fans have been hit by goalposts. Fans have trampled each other. This is stupid. It's got to yeah. stop. The yeah. NCAA morons at the top of the pyramid and the conferences, the SEC has been actually the progressive leader in this by saying, no, you will be fine six figures. Make it seven. Yeah. You got to have real security, not people just, you know, working uh, in retirement who come out of their houses and stand with their with a blue jacket. No. Security. And they have to enforce it. And the schools have to be on board. And this is just another dumb thing that the NCAA has let go. And it cannot go on. What do we have to see? You sound, a kid being stretched you sound like off the Marcus court. Marcus Spears when you say you need more security. I was disappointed in the wake AD. It's a really weak statement. He didn't even refer to Filipowski by name. He called him the Duke student. The Duke student. Like what was that? 10,000 miles thank away. Thank you for mentioning on, that. Come on, on. Here. let's go, please. Let's move to the NBA and the coaching carousel. No, nobody got fired. In fact, Steve Kerr extended his contract by two years. So we'll now be up at the end of the 2025, 26 season. Same time, Steph Curry's contract will be up. Wilbon, what does Kerr's two year extension say about the Warriors plans to you? It says, let's go dubs right now, right now. We're not dealing with five years. Steph Curry's not leading the team to the championship at 40, but he can lead one now. I mean, look, I know they lost to Denver yesterday in a terrific game, but they've been hot enough eight out of ten before that. They've seen what they can do, adjustments they can make, changes they can make. Um, Kaminga being introduced into the lineup and being almost a star himself. And Steve Kerr actively is trying to handle all that, and you do that with Steph Curry. Steph Curry, now to, to me, Tony, one of the ten great players of all time. I don't know what position he goes at. I don't care. Steph Curry. Steph Curry and Steve Kerr go hand in hand, and they still go with Draymond Green, yeah. and I hope with Klay Thompson in this new role, him coming off the bench. Now, you squeeze it now. The next two years, that's what you got. Steph's, Steph's not going to be yeah. Tom Brady, so, so let's get over that and let's go for it, and that's what this contract extension says to me. One of the great coaches of all time, Steve Kerr. So Steve Kerr now is the second highest paid coach in the NBA, second only to Greg Popovich. This is for two years and $35 million, awful lot of money coaching. If you ask me what I read into it, I read into it that after 2026, Steve Kerr is going to leave. The people that he came in with, Clay Thompson and yep. Steph Curry and Draymond Green, will Sunshine be old. Not all of them will even, well, not all of them will even be there at that point. And I think Kerr, by lining up with Curry, is suggesting that maybe the two of them could go out at the same time. If you ask me the Warriors' plans, the Warriors would have Steve Kerr forever. He's a great coach. He's got four championship rings. He's, got, he's the Olympic coach. He's got championship rings as a player. It's airtight. His resume is, is absolutely it airtight. Is. I mean, I understand why they would want him, but it does feel to me like he, he's signaling to the world 
I'm out after this. I'm out. Well, I don't, I don't think it's about the looking for out. I think it's looking at what we got. The glass is, is more than half full. What we got? In two years, who the hell knows what's going to happen in two years? I mean, what you got now. You got now in a tough Western Conference. Let's go for it now. A year and a half ago, they won a championship that people didn't think they would win and that season started. So let's go for this. And, God, if Steph Curry is healthy and out there, Tony, you got a chance. You got a chance because he's still one of the best players in the league. And as I just said, to me, one of the best players of greatest players of all time. Let's take a break now. Coming up, Sean McDermott says it's a matter of when, not if, the Bills win a Super Bowl. Is he right? And could you tell Tony who won yesterday's NASCAR race without replay? Did you know? So most NBA coaches make six, seven, eight million dollars. And in Spolstra and Kerr and Pop make double that. And so does Monty Williams, Monty. which is amazing. Monty. He makes double what everybody else makes. Time for a little babble from the rabble. That is a good phrase. I wish I'd written that. Let me see what's first here. Put the glasses on. Here we go, Mike. Sean McDermott says it's a matter of when, not if, the Bills win a Super Bowl. Do you agree with that? Well, he he said some other things, too, to the the Athletic in an interview. And, Tony, you know, that's what he's supposed to say. What is he supposed to say? Uh, You know, we might kind of like to sort of get there. No, that's supposed to be the attitude of your leader. And he, he said some other things. He acknowledged how hard it was. And he talked about sort of the obsessive pursuit. He might not have used the word obsessive. I'm using that. But he used the word pursuit, like following that ball carrier. Yes, that's what you're supposed to feel if you're a Buffalo. You are set up. You have enough players to challenge and win. Can you get past Kansas City? Maybe, maybe not. But that's your mission. Is it automatic? No. Ask Jim Kelly and Marv Levy. And Thurman Thomas and, you know, Cornelius Bennett and Bruce Smith asked those guys who were great. Not once, not twice, but four times. Great like six years. That's and right. so, you know, that's, that's what he's right. supposed to say. Good for him. Yeah, I think it's a matter of if Sean McDermott is there and they win the Super Bowl. If I own the Buffalo Bills, I would have hired Bill Belichick this year. And I'm sort of surprised they didn't do that. Bill Belichick can close in the Super Bowl and this guy can't. You know, and, and I mean, I'll go further here. There is no reason, this is sort of what you're saying, there's no reason to believe that Buffalo is demonstrably better than Kansas City. No reason to that at all. No. Josh Allen's a very good player. Is he as good as Patrick Mahomes? No, he's not, because nobody is as good as Patrick Mahomes. I can see Baltimore and Cincinnati and down the road, Houston and maybe the Chargers winning a Super Bowl ahead of Buffalo. The phrase that, that he used was the relentless pursuit relentless of the Super pursuit, Bowl. But yes. as you're suggesting, that, phrase. that doesn't guarantee a win. Yeah, ask Marv Levy, <laughs> ask Bud Grant, ask a lot of people that have gotten there and haven't won, and this guy hasn't even gotten there. Yeah. So, But again, you the know, question I is, mean, do you agree with his sen- – that's what I want to – Hear from him. I don't want to hear less than that from my head coach. Or then go get Bill Belichick. Okay. Let's get another one in here. Give you more to talk about. Could you tell who won the NASCAR race without the replay? Tony, I'm going to have to answer honestly. No. And I just even, we looked at it upstairs. Matt Kelleher called this clip up for me. And I thought the car on the left, on the rail, I thought that car it got to the checker area first. Me too. But not the Me yellow too. line first. Didn't get to the ribbon, as we would say, for Carl Lewis and Ben Johnson and, you know, others. Um, I No, I got it wrong. I'm looking at it in slow motion and got it wrong. So, thankfully, they know yeah. what they're watching and they can watch it like a million times. But what a finish. What, when, that's like a movie finish. So, here's the deal. I could not tell who won without replay nor could I tell who won with replay. Yeah. Like you, I thought the inside car won, yep. and it turned out the outside car won. These people are going 180 miles an hour, Amazing. three abreast, and they're one inch apart. They're totally insane yeah. to do this. I said this to you about the Daytona, that whoever puts together the technology that shows you how this works in the Daytona, you had a million different angles at every single crash. It's just remarkable technology. It is. I, I still don't know who won this race, but I, there have been horse races, Mike. 
There have been horse races that they call a dead heat. Well, two usually. They've called it dead heat because they think the the horses are tired. If they called this a dead heat, I would have totally accepted it. I would have accepted it. Yeah. Seemed that way to me. Except for the car in the middle was a little bit back. Yeah, enough the email. Let's take one last break. Still to come, your boy Anthony (laughs) Kim will apparently return to professional golf in the very near future. Yeah, real like near. Like like yeah. day after tomorrow, maybe? Lionel Messi yeah. and Jordi Alba create something special for Inter-Miami. Don't you miss the race? You went to a couple of races as I did. It's incredibly yeah. fascinating. It, 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 it is. I mean, and all the NASCAR races seem to end. Right. Happy time, people. Happy 21st birthday yesterday, Brandon Pajemski. Warriors rookie is the answer to the trivia question, who replaced Clay Thompson in the starting lineup after all those games and all those years? Pajemski was the 19th overall draft pick last year out of Santa Clara, where he was the West Coast Conference co-player of the year. He's averaging 10 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists as the Warriors enter the transitional phase with their roster and try to remain contenders. The next stall were to be pushed back a bit will likely be Draymond Green. Last will be Steph Curry. This is the toughest part of coaching, finding a graceful way to replace longtime stars. Tony, I'd say that's the second toughest thing. The toughest is finding people to replace them. And that's what Pajemski and Kaminga, they seem like they're on the runway toward doing it. My God, they're trying to replace people on one of the great teams in, in the history of sports in America. You don't just do that, but they're, they're, they're doing it pretty well right now. I like watching both of them. Happy anniversary, Pete Weber. This is a PTI favorite. On this day 12 years ago, Weber won his record fifth U.S. Open Bowling Championship, breaking the tie with his father, Dick. Pete and Dick Weber had been tied at four since 2007. When Weber won the championship, and because he was the last seed, he had to climb the stepladder to the two and three seeds before the championship round, which he won by one pin on a closing strike. And when he won, Weber declared vigorously and somewhat confusingly, quote, I did it. That's right. I did it. Who do you think you are? I am, unquote. I don't know what he was talking about. Tony, I don't know what he was talking about either. It's one of the great nonsense rants ever. And he loves that we put this on. I I did meet him at an event, my own book. Tony, you ever go out and roll 199 on national TV? I'm just asking. No, no. Did you? Uh, I guess yes, you did. I did. Happy trails, Peter King. Our friend, the great football writer, is retiring. He's simply not interested anymore in the day-to-day minutia of covering pro football. He's been to 40 Super Bowls in a row, and this year he thought it might be nicer to watch it on TV. We know Peter King well. Yes, we do. He's been a guest on this high-quality cable program many times. He's been a guest on my podcast many times. Nobody covered pro football better than Peter King. He lost interest in things other than training camp and games, and he knew what that meant. After Kansas City won the Super Bowl a year ago, King asked Andy Reid if he was going to retire, and Reid shot back, are you? King was thinking about it then. He's doing it now. He's only 66, and I can say only, just as I can say, exactly what am I doing here? Tony, a little inside baseball. So Peter King and I came up together. We're a year apart in age. Covering pro football. Yes, I covered pro football for a long time. Sports Illustrated wanted both of us to leave what we were doing and come and cover. Peter, I think, was at Newsday. Then I was at the Washington Post. Come and cover football for Sports Illustrated. And a sage mentor named Tony Kornheiser said to me, you don't leave where you are if they can make you happy. So Peter left. I didn't. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, Peter and I share the fact that we both worked at Newsday at yeah. one point. Love the Peter. Newsday alumni He's great at it. He's a great society. person. I loved hanging out with him all these years. Loved it. All of that is true. And again, what is also true, only 66. Come on, what are you doing? Big finish, here we go. Let's do it. The Red Wings forward, your boy Patrick Kane, yeah. scored the overtime game winner in his return to Chicago. How did you feel about that? First emotion, angry that he's gone. Second emotion, oh, wait a minute. We want Macklin Celebrini with the first pick again. The Bears ain't the only Chicago team looking at a first pick. We hope 
The Blackhawks wind up with that pick. Macklin Celebrini and Patrick Kane can help that. What a contribution to the team where he won three Stanley Cups. Lionel Messi scored in stoppage time to get Inter Miami a draw with LA Galaxy. You impressed with that? He is the most fabulous athlete in sports in the world. You put him on the stage, he delivers all the time. He does deliver. He does. Stop with mock hockey drafts, please. Two years in a row. Stop. UCLA reportedly finalizing the hire of Eric Bieniemy as offensive coordinator. Your thoughts? You know, Tony, they're too complex and they're too conflicting to even get into today. It's a segment. It really is. The Golf Channel says Anthony Kim will play in this week's Live Tour event in Saudi Arabia. You excited to see that? He's been going 11 years. I'm curious. I'm not excited yet. I'm right. curious. The last okay. one, Women's Gold Cup tonight, U.S. versus Mexico. Who you got? Mexico's got something at stake. The U.S. is through. It doesn't. Eh, eh. I'm going to watch it. It's 10 o'clock tonight. You, you hit two in a row. If you lose this one, you're a chump. We're out of time. Try and do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow. DMV High School Hoops tonight, Tony. Gonzaga versus Paul the Sixth at American University. I'm going, you should too. Your sports. PT.